How's it going everyone? Welcome to my channel and my very first YouTube video. Today, I am going to share with you my thoughts on the trailer of the upcoming movie Tenet from Christopher Nolan. If you are watching this video, you most likely have already seen the trailer. But if you haven't, I strongly encourage you to follow the link in the description and watch it. And for the rest of the folks, let's dive right in. First, let's go over some very easy clues the trailer has revealed. So, the first clue we learn from the trailer is that the character John David Washington played, let's just call him Johnny. He passed the test and was rewarded, or cursed if you ask me, a special ability. It is quite obvious that the subject being tested here is one's heart, not one's body. Johnny passed because he has a heart of a true hero. He is willing to run into a burning building no matter the cost and he'd rather die than giving up his colleagues. Such a test is needed because the special ability they're about to give Johnny is so powerful that the wrong person may use it to destroy the world instead of saving it. The second clue is about the ability itself. It somehow made Johnny experience everything around him going backwards in time. Unfortunately, the trailer doesn't tell us much about the ability. We don't know exactly how it works. We're not sure if it is a one-time thing or if Johnny can turn it on and off as he wishes. The third and the last clue is that, with this special ability, Johnny will try to stop the World War III from happening. It is worth noting that whoever is planning to start a war probably has the same ability Johnny has. And the outcome of such war is supposed to be worse than a nuclear holocaust. Now, please allow me to introduce some basic rules of Tenet. However, please know that I cannot guarantee the accuracy of these rules because I made them up. But they seem logical, and I need something as a foundation to build my theories upon, so here we are. Rule number one, one can only experience him or herself going forward in time. As far as I know, Human brains can only process information along with the direction of time passage. And let's assume zombie brains work the same way. That means even if Mr. Zombie here is actually the one going backwards in time, in his own eyes, he's the one going forward in time, while the lady and the dog are the ones going backwards in time. To make my life easier, I'll just call people like Johnny and Mr. Zombie here time walkers, as they can walk back in time. Now let's move on to rule number 2. There will be physical interaction between objects with opposite direction of time passage. Three, two, one, fight. Fatality. In other words, when time walking, Johnny can physically interact with things or people going backwards in time. The things he sees are not illusions, they are real. The third and the last rule is that ordinary citizens, or civilians like you and me, can be used as a reference to tell who is time walking. I think it is logical to assume that this special time walk ability is mastered by only a few. So if you see Johnny's car and civilian cars are moving in one direction in time, while the Audi is going the opposite direction in time, it doesn't really matter who appears to move backwards. We all know it is the man in the Audi who is actually time walking, because civilians are not time walkers. This rule will come in handy when we analyze the car chase scene later. Okay, with these three rules in mind, now let's move on to my theories on how Tenet works. Theory number one, simple time reverse slash central symmetric parallel universe. If either one of these two theories is correct, then when the ability is used, time walkers will experience everything and everyone except themselves going backwards in time and they themselves will appear going backwards in time as well, for those who are not time workers. I basically just repeated what we've just mentioned in rule number one. That's why I call it simple time reverse theory. But what's with the slash central symmetric parallel universe theory? What is it, and why do I put it here with simple time reverse theory? Well, it's because these two theories are almost interchangeable. Let me explain. This is Johnny, before he uses the time walking ability. 
the black arrow indicates the direction of normal time passage. Now he's going to use his power. He closed, then opened his eyes. Then ta-da! He sees everything going backwards in time, except himself. And that's what will happen if simple time reverse theory is correct. Now let's take a look at the central symmetric parallel universe theory. Assuming there are two universes, A and B, and they form a central symmetric system. In our case, they have opposite directions of time passage, but everything else is identical. That means, when Johnny A uses time walking ability, Johnny B will use it too at the same time. And this time, the ability does not make one experience time going backwards. Instead, it instantly switches places between Johnny A and B. And because these two universes are identical except direction of time passage, neither Johnny A nor Johnny B will know that they've been teleported to another universe. All they see is everything suddenly goes backwards in time. You see, the fundamental mechanisms of these two theories are quite different, but the results are indistinguishable for Johnny. That's why I put these two theories together. But I personally prefer the parallel universe theory because in the trailer, Nolan arranged the five letters of Tenet in a central symmetric way. Maybe that's a hint. Who knows? The advantage of these two theories is that they're straightforward. There are multiple scenes in the trailer showing things and people going backwards in time. For example, we saw the ships going backwards, we saw a guy crawling backwards to his gun, we saw a car driving backwards, and we saw in the last scene, a guy rushed out from the sliding door and bumped into Johnny. If you play the last scene backwards, you will see that it was actually Johnny who pushed that guy into the sliding door in the first place. Some people think the first scene in the trailer that shows time going backwards is the scene where Johnny and his colleague, played by Robert Pattinson, let's just call him Rob, flying up to the roof of a building. It is thought that their time walking ability somehow made them reverse the gravity. But I don't think that's the case. I think it was the special vest that they were wearing helped them went up to the roof. In fact, I think Johnny is actually taking the test in that scene. Rob is the colleague he refused to give up later when he got caught. Which means, at the moment he doesn't have the time walking ability yet. Also, time going backwards doesn't mean everything is opposite. Gravitational pull will not become gravitational push. It still works the same. Otherwise, Johnny will see everybody just start shooting up into the sky like rockets when he is time walking. Yes, we will see things magically fly up, but that's only because they fell down in the first place when time is going the normal direction. And when things are flying up, they are still under the effect of gravitational pull. Now, let me show you what I think is the first scene in the trailer showing time going backwards. It's the scene with cargo trains. Let's take a look. First we see Johnny sitting on the railroad, trembling. Pay attention to the cargo train to his right. It is going backwards. And yes, I know it is pretty normal for trains to go backwards. That's not the point. The point is, when the camera switched angle to the guy played by Andrew Howard, we see that the train to Johnny's right is now going opposite direction. Also pay attention to the train to Johnny's left. When the camera angle is switched back to Johnny in next frame, the train to Johnny's left is also going opposite direction. Now, there may be different trains, but I won't be surprised if Andrew Howard is actually time walking here. That is assuming Johnny hasn't learned the time walking ability yet at the moment. Different camera angles represent different perspective of time passage. When the camera is focused on Johnny, we're looking at his perspective of time passage. And when the camera is focused on Andrew, we are looking at his perspective of time passage, which has opposite direction with Johnny's. Straightforward as it seems, but this simple time reverse or central symmetric parallel universe theory is flawed, big time. First of all, if Johnny can experience everything around him going backwards in time, then he will not see the world as we do, because when time is going backwards, light travels backwards as well. Let me explain. Let's just say this cute little dog here has the same ability Johnny has. During the day, light travels from the sun to the poop on the ground. Depends on the wavelength, most of the light will be absorbed by the poop. The rest will get reflected. And some of the reflected light will be captured by the dog's eyes. That's how the dog sees the poop. But when the dog is time walking, light travels backwards. 
That means the light travels from the dark side to the poop, then gets reflected, along with other wavelengths of lights produced by the poop itself, to the sun. To the dark side, the poop just vanishes. Actually, not just the poop. The dog won't see anything at all. The world is completely dark to him. The simple time reverse theory also introduces a paradox, which I call it chicken head paradox. Let's take a look at the following scenario. The chef saw Johnny open the door and back into the store. When he approached to the table, Johnny turned around. Chef grabbed the chicken. The chicken laid an egg. The chef then killed the chicken and made roast chicken with it. The roast chicken was placed in front of Johnny, but he didn't touch it. Instead, he backed out the restaurant and closed the door. We just went over the whole thing in chef's perspective. Now let's take a look at the other side of the coin by looking through Johnny's eyes. Johnny went into the restaurant and saw there's roast chicken on the table, ready for him to enjoy. But before he can take a piece, the chef took the roast chicken away and somehow turned the roast chicken back into a bloody dead chicken. You know, with feathers and stuff. Then knives in, knives out, the dead chicken came back to life. As chef was putting the chicken back, the egg in the nest flew up and went right into the chicken's butt. Johnny then turned around and walked out. All right, now we've seen the whole thing with different perspectives. A bit weird, I know, but everything still checks out. However, if Johnny managed to enter the restaurant a bit earlier so that he can have time on the roast chicken, then things will start to get messed up pretty badly. Let's go with what Johnny saw first this time. He went into the restaurant, saw the roast chicken on the table. He grabbed the chicken head and put it into his mouth. And let's assume Johnny has a very efficient digestive system. The chicken head came right out as poop. As soon as Johnny pooped, the chef took the roast chicken away. Again, he then turned the roast chicken back into a dead chicken. You know, with feathers and stuff. But not the head this time. The head turned into a poop, remember? But the chef doesn't care. He's on the autopilot mode going backwards in time. So knives in, knives out, the headless chicken came back to life. As chef was putting the chicken back, the egg in the nest flew up and went right into the headless chicken's butt. Even Johnny thinks this is too weird, so he turned around and walked out. Uncanny, right? There's more. Let's take a look at the chef's perspective. He saw Johnny went into the store backwards. He also noticed there's shit on the floor, but he doesn't give a shit about the shit on the floor. And Johnny doesn't seem to care either. So the chef grabbed the chicken. And I don't think it is possible for the chef to kill a headless chicken, so he has to start with a normal chicken. And we know how this goes. The chicken laid an egg, got killed, and turned into roast chicken. Now here comes the fun part. In chef's eyes, Johnny is going backwards in time. So the poop on the floor will fly up to his ass and came out of his mouth as a chicken head. Johnny will then put the chicken head back in the plate. Now we have a chicken with two heads. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just witnessed the chicken head paradox. If time reverse is an unstoppable force, then nothing and nobody can alter the path of the chicken head going backwards in time. Otherwise, we will have this chicken head paradox. Johnny cannot eat that chicken head, and if we think about it, he cannot even move that chicken head a bit, because eating the chicken head is basically moving it from one place to another. And if we look closer, there's actually no fundamental differences between the chicken head and anything else. If Johnny cannot do anything to that chicken head, for the same reason, he won't be able to do anything at all. He even cannot move a single molecule of oxygen in the air. The path of things going backwards in time cannot be intervened. Well, it looks like the simple time refers, or central symmetric parallel universe theory, might not be the right one to explain how tenant works. But let's just ignore that chicken head for a moment. Let's just assume, when time walking, Johnny is free to do whatever he wants to do. Will this make things any better? Let's think about this. When Johnny is time walking, can he just pick up a handgun from some random places and use it to shoot something? Probably not. For Johnny, the gun does not shoot bullet. It sucks the bullet in. But knowing this is not enough. In order for Johnny to use the gun, he has to know where to point the gun at. He can't just point the gun at anywhere and hopes a bullet will magically appear and fly back to the muzzle. Also, he needs to keep the gun pointed at the right direction when the trigger is pulled. Whoever has shot a gun before 
knows that a small movement at the muzzle will have a big difference on where the bullet lands on the target. It still works the same way when Tom is going backwards. If Johnny flinched when pulling the trigger, even a tiny little bit, magic won't happen. A handgun has too many moving parts. How about something simple, something without any moving parts? Say a knife. Can Johnny pick up a knife and use it to stab some bad guys when time walking? Well, it can be tricky. From what Johnny sees, blades do not cut things open. Instead, they fuse things back together, like some kind of magic glue. But isn't this weird to think sharp blades glue things back together? If Johnny grabs the knife and stabs the bad guy in the chest anyway, the knife should still be able to penetrate the skin and muscle, right? It is really hard to imagine otherwise. What if it all depends on the direction of motion? If the knife moves towards the direction where its tip is pointed, then it'll penetrate. And if it moves towards the direction where the handle is pointed, it'll put things back together. Well, if that's the case, then we'll probably see Johnny doing this again and again. What the f? All these paradoxes I've shown are my opinion based on my knowledge of science and logic. But we must also keep in mind that the subject we are studying here is not science. It is fundamentally a form of art. What I am trying to say is, science and logic can be used to study the real world, but they might not work in Tenet, which is a world Nolan created. He can tweak science however he wants in the world of Tenet, no matter how bizarre or uncanny. If he did a good job in telling the story, and he always does, we, the audience, will naturally accept his version of science and logic in the world of Tenet. So, if common science and logic cannot rule out simple time reverse or central symmetric parallel universe theory, is there anything in the trailer that suggests those two are not the right ones to explain how Tenet works? I think I might have just found one. Let's take a look at these civilian cars. Let's say normally people drive them from left to right, but when time is reversed, the cars will move from right to left. Pay close attention and we'll notice that the direction of motion will reverse, but not the orientation of the cars. Doesn't matter whether time is reversed or not, the civilian cars will always face the same direction, which in our case is to the right. Things a little bit different for time walkers though. When someone's time walking, he will see all the civilian cars driving backwards. And if he wants to drive safely on the same road, or if he wants to chase one of the cars going backwards, the time walker will have to turn his car around and drive towards the same direction other cars are going. Remember rule number three? Civilians can be used as a reference to tell who is time walking. In this case, the car that has different orientation from civilian cars on the same lane is always driven by time walkers. With that in mind, let's take a look at the car chase scene in the trailer. I have spent hours checking frame by frame on the car chase scene, and I was able to find out that it was shot near the city of Tallinn of Estonia, on the road of uh, Lagnati. I know nothing about Estonian language, so excuse me if my pronunciation is off. Thanks to Google Map, it actually wasn't too difficult to find the location of each scene. Notice that the name of the bridges crossing the road hasn't been changed, which means the story in the movie doesn't happen in a fictional city, it happens in Tallinn of Estonia. This tells us that whether in real life or in the movie, the traffic rules stay the same. And in Estonia, cars drive on the right side, just like here in the States. Everyone, this is important. We'll see about that in a minute. If you have seen the trailer, you must remember this scene which shows a guy with a mask in the Audi. I was able to find this location as well. It is a harbor northwest of Tallinn, about 90 minutes drive away from where the car chase scene was shot. I am pretty sure it is the same Audi in the car chase scene. And since it is only 19 minutes away, I guess this harbor scene happens shortly before or after the car chase scene. Now let's get back to the car chase scene itself. To make it easier to understand, I'll go over the scenes on Google Map. In the first scene, we are on the top lane of the road Lagnati. I am guessing this scene is shot from the Audi, but I can't be sure. But we see the civilian cars are facing the correct direction on both the top and bottom lanes. 
Allow me to remind you that cars drive on the right side of the road in Estonia. By the way, I am using the yellow cars on the map to represent civilian cars. The second scene is a bit more interesting. We have Rob and Johnny in the Beamer at the bottom lane driving forward from west to east, and we have the Audi on the same lane driving backwards towards the same direction. Again, everything looks normal with civilian cars in this scene. Based on rule number three, we know that the driver in the Audi is time walking. The next scene is similar with the second. Nothing special to talk about. It is the last scene that messes everything up. The Beamer and Audi moved from the bottom lane to the top lane with their orientation switched. The Beamer is facing west and Audi is facing east, which is okay. Maybe they just made a U-turn at some point. The real problem is the civilian cars on the top lane. They are now facing the wrong direction. They are supposed to face west, not east. Remember that for civilian cars, we say directions of motion can change, but the orientation stays the same. But clearly, that's not the case in the trailer. This is direct evidence from the trailer, indicating that the simple time reverse or central symmetric parallel universe theory is not correct. There we have it. Simple time reverse or central symmetric parallel universe theory seems like a good fit at first glance, but both science and the details in the trailer suggest it otherwise. Which makes me wonder, what if it is not time reverse at all? The trailer clearly indicates time is going backwards. But those are the things the magician wants us to see. We ought to be more skeptical, right? So I started looking for a new theory that does not have all those paradoxes related to time, and will at the same time perfectly explain the wrong orientation of the civilian cars. Did I find it? Not quite yet. But I have something interesting to show you. I call this theory of central symmetric parallel universe with perception of time passage. Such a dumb name, I know. But anyway, let's take a look. Let's construct a pair of central symmetric parallel universes, very similar with the ones we've seen, but slightly different. You see, these two universes are still identical with each other, except the direction of time passage. But everything in those two universes, no matter alive or dead, all exists at the current moment or now. When Johnny A and Johnny B uses their ability and switch places, they and everything else still exist. At the same moment, which is now, and they are all on the path from past to the future. There's no time walking. Nothing is really going backwards in time. But in Johnny A's eyes, everything in Universe B appears to move backwards, and it is the same with Johnny B. It's all perception of time passage. Confused? Let me use an easy example to explain. Read the four words on the top: from past to future. We start with the letter F, and with the letter E. Easy. Everybody can read that. Same words at the bottom, just with opposite direction. Start with the letter F from the right, and then end with the letter E at the left. But suddenly we cannot read them anymore. You see, most of us read from left to right because we were trained to do so since we were kids. We get so used to this that when letters are arranged with opposite direction, we will have big trouble reading them. What if it is the same with our perception of time passage? Only this time, we were not trained. We were born like this. Johnny can only experience normal time passage in his own universe when he uses his ability and got teleported to the parallel universe. Although he and everything else in that universe all exist at now, and nothing is really going backwards to the past, but because this universe has opposite direction of time passage in Johnny's perspective. Everything is moving backwards to the future. I know this theory sounds odd, but the advantages are obvious. First, since nothing is going backwards to the past, none of the time-related paradoxes we've talked about earlier applies here. Second, this theory explains why the civilian cars are facing the wrong direction in the last part of the car chase scene, because in that scene, Johnny and Rob are the ones who used the ability and got teleported to the parallel universe. As they can't really change their perspective of time passage, in their eyes, civilian cars are moving backwards, not to the past, but to the future. I wish I could say this theory has no flaws and explain what we see in the trailer perfectly, but I can't. First of all, this theory is just a rough idea. Just like I can't read backwards, I can't really wrap my head around how this theory works exactly. 
Second, I always think that World War III is started by time walkers, and the time walking will be used as a weapon against ordinary citizens. But in this new theory I came up with, time walking seems very much useless, if not completely useless. So there must be something wrong. Third, if time is not going reverse, then we're not supposed to see dead things came back to life or broken things came back together. Yet in the car chase scene, Johnny saw the crashed car came back together. Also, remember when we say in the simple time reverse theory that the direction of motion can reverse, but not the orientation of the cars? Well, in this new theory, it's kind of opposite. Civilian cars can have either orientations, but they can only move towards one direction. Which means, in the last part of the car chase scene, civilian cars on the top lane will never move towards east. Unluckily, that's not what we've seen in the trailer. But the real killer, for both theories actually, is that in the last part of the car chasing scene, the civilian cars on the top and bottom lanes are facing the same direction. How are we supposed to explain that? If under normal circumstances, civilian cars on the top and bottom lanes are facing and moving in opposite directions, then it doesn't really matter how tenant works. We don't need to know the underlying mechanisms. We should always see those cars in different lanes facing and moving in opposite direction. Just like when you put chicken in the oven, you get roast chicken. If you put duck in the oven, you get roast duck. What we see in the trailer basically means you put chicken and duck in the oven together, and you get two roast chicken out of the oven. This does not make sense. Since its first release last December, I've spent hours and hours studying the trailer, hoping I can figure out how Tenet works. But as you can see, none of the theories I came up with can perfectly explain every details in the trailer. I couldn't convince myself to just give up until I realized that, in the trailer, someone says to Johnny, don't try to understand it, feel it. It is actually Nolan speaking to us. This great magician is telling us, don't bother. And I decided to listen to him. Maybe you should do the same. But before I finish, I want to throw out some wild guesses. First, I think the potential World War III is going to happen between the two parallel universes, and death is the bridge connecting these two universes, hence the afterlife and the mask. Maybe Johnny entered a state of being simultaneously alive and dead, like the famous Schrodinger's cat. This quantum superposition state enables Johnny and others like him to travel between the two parallel universes. Second, I think Rob does not have the ability Johnny has. In the scene where the civilian car crashed, Rob and Johnny always look at a different direction. It looks like they don't see what the others see. Rob seems looking at Audi while Johnny is staring at the crashed civilian car. And we also have that conversation, what happened here, it hasn't happened yet. All indicates Rob might not have the same ability Johnny has. In Inception, Cobb assembled a team with members of different specialty to do the job. It is not unlikely that Rob and Johnny have different ability and they have to work together to prevent the World War III. Now, let me go completely nuts and reveal my last guess. I think we have to at least buy two tickets to see Nolan's upcoming movies if we want to know the whole story. And no, I am not talking about watching the same movie twice to wrap our head around the story like we all did on Inception. I'm saying we have to buy one ticket to watch Tenet once then buy another to watch it playing backwards. Yes, I am saying Tenet is not a movie, they're two movies, like two sides of a coin. Is it possible? Normally I would say no, but with 200 million budget and a genius behind the camera, I'm not so sure. Anyway, I really can't wait to see the movie which will hit theater in July, and I know you feel the same. Never in my life I've spent so much time on a 2 minutes movie trailer and I didn't know I could have so much fun doing the research and making the video. And I really want to thank you for watching it. If you have any questions or want to share your own thoughts on the trailer, please comment below. See you next time!